This is part 7 of the canvas tutorial and now we're going to focus on the shadow effects. So with the shadow effects we can basically emulate shadows going in certain directions. And this can be very useful or we can just put a shadow around a box where you have that what we call that shadow effect in CSS. So let's start to do that. And first of all, before we even do anything, let's look at the commands we have for shadow. Basically here we have the shadow attributes. And in the shadow attributes, what we have is, well, first of all, we can control the color, the shadow color. Next, what we have is the shadow, uh, shadow. And then we have here the offset and the offset for X, indicating that this is a horizontal shadow effect. So we can push it to the left or to the right. Next, what we have here is the shadow offset y basically it go this is for the vertical level pushing it up or down so you can emulate a shadow with from a certain direction like a lamp shining one side and making a shadow at the other side finally we have here what we call the shadow blur and the shadow blur basically gives it a blurred effect so it's not too solid dark and it will gradually overlap and it's quite interesting as well to have and very commonly used for a css button we have this shadowy effect on there all right so let's start to make something so you can quickly see how it looks like so the first thing i want to do here ctx and i'm going to say here begin path so we're going to start drawing something and then we're going to say here ctx and then we have here the stroke style and i'm going to assign this a color in this case i already have the color ready here color red i'm going to put that in there and then once i have that what i want to do now is to of course position the drawing so i'm going to say move to with capital t and here we're going to put on the x and y coordinates in this case i'll just put it as 100 pixel by 100 pixel and then that's our starting point the next one will be the ctx dot line to to start drawing the line and if we make just a horizontal line what we want to do here is maybe a 100 pixel line so we will keep the vertical level same but horizontally we're going to move 100 pixels from this point all right so now we have all of those here and then what i want to do finally is ctx.stroke and this is basically drawing the item save that refresh there you are so to make this more visible we have to uh, increase the line width so we say here ctx.line width and let's give this a, a 30 pixel save that refresh all right so this looks nice and i realize if we're going to work with shadows probably it's better to have a background Convert it into another color. So I'm going to convert the background here just to white. That's in the CSS that we have assigned. Save that, refresh. All right, so now we have the white background with this. So now let's start to work with a shadow. So what I'm going to do here below is the following. Just below the line width, I'm going to say the following ctx.shadow color. And this here, could be any color we want in this case i'll just say this is black for now it's a string value so save that and then refresh all right so now we have a shadow color but of course we have no shadow movement here and the reason why is because we have no offset so you will not see anything here because the shadow is now exactly underneath this specific uh, element or this line here so what i want to do now is to push the shadow with the offset so we're going to say here now ctx dot shadow i can say here shadow offset y and then we can put in here let's move this 10 pixels if i save that refresh now as you can see the shadow has moved 10 pixels so if you want to for example if we have a sun here or a lamp here where the light directs this then maybe we want to push the big part down so with the offset of the y we can basically do that so what i'm going to do here now is now I'm just say offset y save that refresh and now as you can see it gives a nice 3d effect here while well, we're just here on a 2d element and this here looks like that there's a light source coming from one side and then here you can see here this 3d effect creating the shadow so final item here what we could do here is the ctx dot shadow blur doing this you can say here how many pixels we want to blur. So if I do five pixels, save that, refresh. You can see here now the shadow has 
a slightly blurred effect, which is quite nice. So what we could do as well is, for example, we could maybe comment out this, save that, and then we put it in here. And what is happening now here is basically we create here a nice effect on it. As you can see here, the shadow is now exactly behind this element, but because the shadow blur, it gets like a five pixel blurred effect in every direction. And this creates this nice clickable shadow effect here. So what we could do as well is maybe to create multiple and just control the different position. Because remember, with the shadow offset X, we can go to the left or right. So how would we do this? Well, the first thing I'm going to do here, just for the sake of it, I'm going to just copy this and let's put it in here, but just change the uh, horizontal position of this, or sorry, the vertical position. So I'm going to put this one on 200. If I save this, refresh. Now we have two duplicates, all right? So let's make here another one and one more as well. So we have four, at least, uh, four items here. Uh, let's see, save that, refresh. Oh, of course. So why it's not working here, of course, because I need to push this one on a vertical level. So this will be 400. I save that. Now we have four of these items. So we have here this nice effect where basically the light source would come from this corner and then here we have the effect here. So what happens if the light source would come from here down? How do we push this up? Well, in this case, what we need to do here, and let's work on this one here, the shadow offset, we need to work with the Y. Remember, if we go here on negative, what happens now is we're going to push this up. So why does this really work like this? Remember the following. In a canvas, we're working with pixels and this corner pixel here is 0.0. .0. So if we're going down, we need to increase the amount of pixels. And if we're going up, we may need to decrease the amount of pixels. So that's why here we do negative on the Y only. And then what happens is we were going to the left with 10 pixels, but also going up with 10 pixels. And that is basically here. So if we're doing another one here, uh, let's say here, for example, I want the light source, well, here from this position. So I want to go down but I also want to go to the left side. And I, I, if I'm not mistaken, I said left here, yeah, I mean to the right, if ever I said that. I just realized I mispronounced myself. So basically here, then we put it to the left side because we have the uh, light source here. So what I'm going to do here is on the uh, X value, the horizontal, we go negative, and then we have this one here. Finally, if we want to go to the top and we want to go to the left, what we need to do here is just both in a negative position. Save that, refresh, there we are. So with this, you can almost create like a 3D world where you can control elements and shapes. If there would be a sun or a light source, you could create the effect of the shadow to make it a 3D item. So what we're going to do now, finally, is just to explore the blur a little bit more because we have this blur here, but what happens if we just increase the blur, blur effect? So if I save this here and I put on 20, and here, you can see here the blur becomes bigger and bigger. And then here as well, if you do this on 15, you can see here, as we increase, the blur radius will become bigger, but what happens as well, it will become so blurred here. So if you will see this one, it will almost be faded if you do 50 pixels. Save that, refresh, you can see here now, is a huge area that is starting to blur, but it doesn't really blur very clearly. And that's basically what you can do with this. And if you have heard of neon lights effects, with these kind of things, we can do that one. So let me just show you the last thing, which is the shadow color. So let's make this shadow color a different one. Uh, let's make this blue. And here, let's make this green. And save that. And then we refresh. You can see here now, we're now starting to get different colors. And you can imagine with this, neon effects are very close to what we're doing here, except with more brighter colors.